My name is Jing Yi Huang. So today I'm providing a uh, welcome to the Lightning Talk. Today I'm presenting my major individual project, Chase the Source of Ocean Charge, which was finished when I was a graduate student in the University of Redlands. This project is promoted by Mr. Lalaton from Open Oceans Global, which is a nonprofit organization working on solving ocean crisis. You may have already learned their work in earlier Lightning Talk. If you are interested to learn more about Open Ocean Global, please feel free to visit our website or contact us. There are four parts of this project. The geo database was used by the particle checking model, which was created by Python. After the particle checking model worked well as a script tool in RGS Pro, it was published as a geoprocessing service to RGS Online so that the model can be used by public in a web application. The ocean current data is downloaded from NASA website. The name of the database I downloaded is called Ocean Surface Current Analysis Real Time, which can be called OSCAR data. Python script was used to prepare the geo database. First, the original data was converted from NASDAQ to raster. The second step is using the Meridino velocity and Zonlo velocity to calculate the magnitude and backward direction for the ocean current. Magnitude can be calculated with the Pythagorean theory. The backward direction is calculated with multiple steps. Since the OSCAR data record the ocean current in forward direction, the first thing we need to do is using the inverse tangent to calculate the forward direction and then at 180 degrees to get the backward direction for the database. The last step is data aggregation by month. The OSCAR data set contains 72 layers recording the ocean current data for a year. So in this project, this 72 layers of data for 2020 were aggregated to 12 raster layers, each layer representing the average velocity of that month. The average velocity of each month was calculated from the bands within that specific month. The final step for preparing data is data expansion. The area covered in red is the area that have their ocean current data. But as we can see, the data is not covering most of the short line. Since we also want to study soft location of the charge that on the beach, we need to do some data expansion to cover this area. The near shore ocean current data can be estimated by using long shore uh, current data from an area up to 40 kilometers offshore. So as a result, the original data coverage can be expanded using the OSCAR data. The method to expand the data was replacing the known value of the target pixel by the mean value of its eight neighbors. The known value occurs in the neighborhood when not used for the mean calculation. Let's compare the data coverage area before and after the expansion. After the expansion, now the database covered most of the short line. Finally, the geo database was ready to be used by the GIS model. The main component of this model is the particle check tool from S3. It calculates the local velocity at the target point with the nearest raster self-centers by using a bilinear interpretation function. It has four parameters. Direction and magnitude were created in the geo database. The starting point would be ready when the user clicks on the map. The last one is the days in each month, which will also decide by the user when they fill in the date they found the charge and also how many days they want to chase back. A function of counting days in each month was decided for this parameter. <clears throat> so here is some example about how this function works. If only one month was chased, the final output would be the output of a single run of the particle check tool. If there are more than a month were chased, each month would be produced a polylite from the tool. All this polylite would be append to the final output one by one and forms a continuous light as the final result. So during the appending process, the endpoint of the previous month will be the starting point of the next month. The Python script tool, the Python script was imported as a script tool in Address Pro and published as a geoprocessing service. The geoprocessing service was embedded in a web application where the user can input their starting location and see the potential traveling route of the ocean charge. So this is the interface of the web application. Let's move to a story map to have a closer look of the applications. 
So um, this is the web application that I create for Chase the Sauce of Ocean Trash. This is a real time one. So it's all uh, what is happening right now. So for example, um, there are two ways to use it. The first way is we can locate, locate uh, where we are right now. Just imagine maybe you stand in a beach and you want you saw a trash and then you want to uh, find out where was the trash come from. You can just click on my location. The other, and then uh, for example, if I'm in Camino Beach in Hawaii, so approximately here, I can click on this, click on um, locate where it is. And then um, today is November 4th. So I click on this. Right now it's approximately 12 o'clock right here in PST. So I want to trace by 90 days and then I just create a run and you will escalate in the background. Because of a time manner, uh, maybe we uh, we cannot see the result of this one, but I already prepared some other result. Uh, I recorded it in earlier time. So the example I use here is um, somewhere in the North India Ocean because in this area you have um, seasonal ocean current direction. So the first example I use is started chasing um, in winter, so from January. So we can see the tropical route will be uh, from the west to the east. Then another thing that I uh, use as example is uh, what is happening for summer. So for example, if we started chasing from August, then we can see that the traveling route change is from east to west. So if we want to get more accurate data about where is the charge come from, maybe it's better to use more accurate data with um, time or location. The last example that I want to show this is about uh, when, what happened if the traveling route hit the land. So when the traveling route reached the land, the system will pull up a warning message to tell the user that the charge was from the land approximately how many days ago. So um, this is the um, uh, this is how. Uh, we would use the web application if you find a charge on the beach anywhere in the world, um, in the oceans. So if you are interested in no more, you can feel free to search Chase the South Ocean Charge and uh, Story Map and you will pull up if you want to know more information about this. And, um, and um, that's our all of my presentation here today. I want to give thanks to SRE because they have a really good jazz format for us to make all those things happen. I want to thank you, um, Carol Dennerton from Open Oceans Global who promote this project. I want to give special thanks to my advisor in University of Redlands, uh, Dr. Regent Mart. And thank you so much for attending this lightning talk. If you're interested to know more information, please feel free to contact me. Thank you so much.